John Barry, who joined us on Friday after calling that Thursday night unprecedented home loss by the Clippers, rejoins us after calling Game 7 on ESPN Radio. John, I love this. Back-to-back -back shows. How about that? If I have some NFL questions, you better be available. John, um, look, I'm air for you regardless if it's, N if it's NFL related or not. You know, okay. you know how to hit me. Well, let, let's just put this uh, Tom Brady stuff to bed. I'm, I've had enough. Uh, yeah, you have to, I'll give you the floor on that, John. What do you think? What do you think about that? <laughs> oh, I, I think he he's pretty, uh, pretty much knows what happened. Like, let's just leave it at that. Okay. Now they can't prove it, so now Robert Kraft can cry foul. Did anyone ever Please. let air out of basketballs? Ever? No, but but the the Celtics had had a, a floor that had tons of dead spots that they had a map of that they knew where the dead spots were. Is that right? What do you mean they had a map of it? Well, every they knew where they were. Like there were all kinds of dead spots on the floor on the parquet floor, you know, and so you know where the ball wouldn't bounce up to you. So you got to stay away from those areas. And so that was a home court advantage, literally. Absolutely. For and the then the Celtics. showers. They had showers that didn't have drains. You'd be standing in the shower, the water would be up to your knees. What do you mean they didn't have drains? <laughs> Are you serious? No drains. It was, it was gross. The nastiest place ever. Rats in the locker room. Disgusting. Oh. And then, what, but the Celtics, they, they had properly draining showers, a rat-free oh. environment, is what you're saying? Absolutely. In the home? Sure. <laughs> It's like a spa over there. It's beautiful. This <laughs> is the, the, the whole night. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. It, it smelled of eucalyptus. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> they had a pretty good team, too, though. That's uh, yes, help. they did. And the head coach of the Rockets is one of those guys who was pretty damn good yeah. on that team. And now, yeah. so are, are we not giving Kevin McHale credit because we're too focused on the Clippers collapse, John? Well, I just got back from Houston, and as I was chided walking out of the arena saying I was a Rocket hater uh -oh. by every fan that I saw, uh, maybe so. But as I tried to explain to these people that, we saw a colossal collapse. Uh, I mean, a 3-1 deficit, that's the ninth time that's happened in the history of the NBA. A 19-point lead of a home team that should get it done, and they didn't. But, yes, I mean, let's credit them. Kevin McHale moved Josh Smith into the starting lineup after the team got beat by 25-33. and 33. Uh, And they, they outplayed them. Hey, three straight games, give them credit. They played better on both ends of the floor. And, and they're moving on, so... Yeah, I, I give Kevin a lot of credit. So what did happen for the Clippers? If, if there's a Clipper fan that's sitting out there, head in hand, saying, how did this happen? What, what did happen? Well, I, I think they got fatigued. Uh, you know, particularly Blake Griffin in fourth quarters, he really struggled. Uh, I, I just saw a team yesterday that, just from the outset, that just didn't really have it. I mean, they, they got taken behind the woodshed early, and – made the one run in the third quarter to cut it to three. And after that, they just didn't have it. I mean, the, the thin bench really caught up to them. Now, Austin Rivers had a couple of really good games uh, earlier in the series. Uh, but really, they got, they got no contributions from others. I mean, and you look at the Rockets down the line. I mean, they had so many guys that, that had a major impact in the game. Yesterday, Pablo Prigioni made three great hustle plays that resulted in eight points. Uh, you know, Josh Smith played well. Terrence Jones played well. Jason Terry... Corey Brewer. I mean, they had all these guys that, that played well. It, it, it's not all about stars in the playoffs. Yeah, you need them to play great, but you need other guys to make major contributions, and really the Clippers didn't get that. I have John Barry of the Worldwide Leader in Sports who will be calling the Eastern Conference Finals on ESPN Radio, which is where he called Game 7 of the Clippers Rocket Series yesterday. So I had Kenny Smith on this show prior to the playoffs, John, and he said essentially these playoffs were a referendum on whether to keep the Paul Griffin, DeAndre Jordan triumvirate intact. What do you think now that we've seen what happened in these playoffs? Do you keep these three together? I, I would. I, I think it's a tremendous trio, and you just have to build up what's around it. Uh, J.J. Redick, I thought, had a terrific season. Did not play well, obviously, the last three ball games. Didn't make shots. Uh, Jamal Crawford did not make shots. Uh, you just have to strengthen around those three guys. I mean, uh, to me, Blake Griffin still played better than anybody in this year's playoffs. I thought he was terrific. Uh, Chris Paul still an elite point guard in this league. And DeAndre Jordan uh, is a menace down there defensively, rebounding the basketball. I'd love to have those three. And I think you ask every coach in the NBA, you give me those three guys, I'll fill out the rest of the roster and have a championship-level squad. So it's just figuring out, so who who goes out of the starting lineup? Is that is that Reddit? Well, I, yeah, no, I no, I think JJ's fine there. I I, I got to bring in another three. I, I think Matt Barnes 
uh, is more of a bench player. Uh, I'd, I'd want a three guy uh, that can stand still and make three point shots and defend. Uh, you know, a, a guy like a, a Jay Crowder is up in, in Boston, who I think would be perfect. Uh, you know, the guys that can just stand there and make an open three. Guys like Tabo Cephalosha for Atlanta, Damari Carroll, who's with Atlanta now, is a free agent. You know, the, the Bruce Bowen type guys that San Antonio had for all those years, uh, someone that can t- defend and knock down an open three. Look, it, it's tough. They're they're a little strapped financially. Uh, you know, they can't go out and pay, pay big money for guys. They got to have guys that are going to accept a little less money that want to play on a team uh, that they think can win. John Barry joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show, and of course, lost in uh, Atlanta, closing out the Wizards. And this big game seven is the the Warriors advancing with Steph Curry hitting from 62 feet away, (laughs) nothing but net. And it wasn't just one of those moments where, wow, isn't that incredible? He's really the MVP. It happened with the the Grizzlies thinking maybe at the end of the third quarter they can come up and make it a one-possession game. Instead, it's a blocked shot that winds up in Curry's hands, and then he drains that. That was the end of it. I mean, it really is incredible, John, when you think about it. I'd love to just give you the floor on Curry and that shot. Oh, I'm with you. That that was the game. I mean, you everybody in Memphis thought it was a foul when Jeff Green got his three-point attempt blocked. Yep. Uh, it looked pretty clean. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to get into that. But nonetheless, if he gets three free throws, we're talking about making those. It's a two-point game. And instead, Curry knocks down a 62-footer, and it's eight. So for all the good work that Memphis did to to fight back into that game, they were down nine at the half. They cut into the lead by one, and that was the backbreaker. It was over at that point. Just sitting there, you could see all the air come out of the building. Uh, And look, it's Steph Curry, so I don't say that was a completely lucky shot. He sized it up, and it went right in the bottom. I mean, the guy's amazing. He is so fun to watch. Uh, He's just terrific. Yeah, and what do you think? I mean, if you take a look at the shot again, John, uh, what about maybe saying that if your feet are behind the three-point arc of your opponent? <laughs> you get six? Yes. <laughs> Curry just created what? a six-point shot in the NBA. What are we, MTV Rock and Jock? Why not? I mean, his feet are behind the line <laughs> of the three opponent's three-point arc No, we, from the look, other the end. Three point, the three-point line makes guys that can't shoot it shoot it, so uh, we don't need that. Okay. We, don't need any, we don't need any more incentive to take – Deep threes. So who makes the NBA Finals, John? Uh, I love the Warriors. Uh, I'd be surprised if that series went more than five games. Uh, I think they're that good. They're cranked up. They're ready to go. Um, You know, playing Memphis, I think, was great for them because they're not going to see a defense from Houston that's anywhere near that. Uh, I think they're going to be firing in all cylinders. I love them. And if Kyrie Irving is not right, uh, that's going to be a more compelling series than I think most might think. Atlanta has not played uh, very good basketball thus far. They've been turning it over. They haven't played well offensively. If they can regain their form that they had during the regular season where they won 33 of 35 games and they were beating the elite teams of the West, they're a very capable group. And uh, if Kyrie's not right, uh, Cleveland Cleveland could have a little bit of a problem. I think that's going to be a deep series, six or seven games. And then if, man, if Cleveland makes it, that's five straight NBA finals for LeBron, John. That would be five. Yeah, he's not bad. A little, little seasoning, he'll get better. All right. Hey, John, um, uh, let's have you back on. I'm not tomorrow. I mean, I, I, I can't just say that. I mean, that's too short. No, well, I, I mean, mean back people to... might think, you know, people might think something funny. You know, let's just no, let's it's okay. keep it back to back, back to back shows are one thing. Back to back to back, as we all know. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know if you're hydrated enough for that, John. You know? I got you. We'll, 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 we'll talk some NFL, you know. Uh, as we get into it, I need some help with my fantasy team. So look, I'll, look, be, I'll be on you. Don't, and don't do the Chris Paul going to Schefter. The, the information guys don't know fantasy football like the hosts do, okay? I'm with Trust you. me on this one. I would go. Anything NFL, I'm going right at you. I would go up against any information man or woman in the business and go with the hosts. Go with hosts. Chris Paul calls Schefter when he's doing his Jay Z league. <laughs> And I, you know, I mean, I understand. I get it. Schefter's got a gajillion fault. Go with the hosts, John. I'm here for you, you're, okay? You're my guy, except that Tim Kirkchen is my baseball aficionado. There's, I, I, that will never change. Well, that one, I, I might have to say he's, he's the exception to the rule, but go, go with hosts. Go with hosts. Okay. All right? Yeah. All right, and we'll that. chat hopefully down the line as you do uh, Cleveland and Atlanta on ESPN Radio, okay? You got it, Rich. Thanks, John. You bet that's John Barry right here on The Rich Eisen Show. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern.
on audience.